Okay, I have here yet more proof that Donald Trump is a Jesuit and a papist. Here's an article from Town Hall. It says President Trump is a champion of the Catholic faith. Let's get right into this. It, I'll, I'll read some of this for you. When I arrived on the campus of Notre Dame in 1986 to coach a football team, I had to sign up or had to si had a sign place in the stairwell leading onto the field that read "Play like a champion today." 34 years later, I can't help but think of how President Trump. Let me just full screen this. How President Trump has been a champion for the Catholic community. Hmm. So if Trump was a Bible-believing Christian, why was he a champion of the Catholic community? Because the Catholic Church is is, a, is probably for all of history, all of church history, been the number one enemy of Bible-believing Christians and of Jesus Christ. You know, I mean, he just killed millions of true biblical Christians that refused to bow down to the pagan cult that is Roman Catholicism. It says here, as a lifelong Catholic, I was com I'm compelled to speak out. Archbishop Wilton Gregory of Washington, D.C. recently criticized President Donald Trump for visiting the St. John Paul II, or St. John Paul II, Saint, yeah, he's burning in hell now, this St. John Paul. The Bible says we're all saints. Just read the Pauline epistles. Every time Paul addresses the church, he addresses the church members, he calls them the saints of the Church of Rome, the saints in here, saints in there. All believers are saints. The saint is not some kind of, some special um, position that the church has to elevate you to. You know, like all believers are saints. But again, you see this Catholic hierarchy, this cultic hierarchy of the Catholic Church. Saint John Paul. No, he's burning in hell now. You know, here's a wicked man. A national shrine. Yeah, national shrine. Talk about idolatry. Claiming that the shrine should never have been used as a place for, for a political statement. Well, Trump was just making it clear that he was a Jesuit. He's a Catholic. I mean, he was trained at a Jesuit university. I mean, and according to the Jesuits' own hand, uh, own st standards, if you went to a Catholic university, or no, sorry, went to a Jesuit university, you're a Jesuit. You're part of the Jesuit family. So Trump is a Jesuit by, by their own standard. President Trump visited the shrine and to honor the legacy of, of Pope John Paul II. I feel back, I kind of feel guilty calling him the Pope because Pope is a title for father. And obviously they call him the Pope the Holy Father, which is blasphemous because only God should be called the Holy Father. So... It's actually blasphemous to, to call a man Pope, because, you know, only God is Holy Father, not the Pope, so it, it's total blasphemy, but typical of the Roman Catholic Church. A Pope who understood the importance of advancing religious freedoms across the globe. Yeah, sure, the Catholic Church advancing religious freedom, yeah. Uh, the Catholic Church has always been the number one enemy of religious freedom. When the Christians came to America to escape, to escape papal tyranny over in Europe, they banned, I mean, there are many states that banned Catholics from even, like, living in those states because they knew the danger that Roman Catholicism poses to religious freedom and just basic, basic liberty. Because Catholics, they want, they basically, what they believe, basically, and I've seen this, seen Catholics admit this, like, pre-Vatican II hardcore traditional Catholics say that the church is Christ's kingdom on earth and that, basically, the church has the right to rule everywhere. So, Catholics have this mentality of, we rule the whole world and you better submit to us. So, Having the Catholic Church, allowing Catholics into your state would be a threat to your religious freedom because they have this mentality of we we, we control whatever land we, we rule the world we're Christ Church we're they they think that the kingdom they're they're um I I, I forget is it pre well they're definitely not pre millennial they think that the millennial kingdom is here right now as the Catholic Church but again it's a threat to religious freedom because uh they think they they rule the whole world kind of like how Mystery Babylon rules over, rules over the kings of the earth. So they come to your state and they take over and they, they get rid of any religious freedom. And the early Christians knew that. Well, the early Christians that came to America knew that. Not, talk, not talking about the early Christians of the first century, but the Christians that came to America knew that. So they, they banned, they made sure that Catholics were not allowed, even up until the 1920s, uh, Roman Catholics were, were barred, well not barred, but like the people did everything they could to stop the Roman Catholics from getting into political office because they knew the danger. I mean, it was until the Pope was banned from America until the 1980s. I mean, that just shows that they knew the danger that Cat the Catholicism poses to religious freedom and basic liberty of conscience, the right to bear arms, freedom of the press, freedom of association. All that is a, is a, that all that is a, a basically threatened by Roman Catholicism, by papal rule. I mean, look at the Dark Ages. So, I mean, the Pope was literally banned from America until the 1980s. So people knew the danger that he posed. You know, getting off, getting a sidetracked, but I had to go off on that. But, you know, because uh, as a Christian, I, I do 
believe in, in freedom and liberty. I'm very I'm very libertarian in my, my political leanings. I am also socially conservative, but I, I can, I'd be considered probably a paleo libertarian because I do believe in traditional values, but I also believe in, in liberty and freedom, like liberty of conscience, which is why I also vehemently oppose things like communism, fascism, Nazism, anything that opposes that poses a threat to religious freedom and just basic liberties, liberty of conscience, you know, freedom of association, all that stuff. I'm very right-leaning libertarian. I'm, I'd be considered a right libertarian. All that is a danger or is threatened by Roman Catholicism. But um, the president also understands how religious freedom curtails terrorism and domestic violence and strengthens democracy. Uh, economic development and opportunities for women. That is why he recently, yeah, women ought to be in the kitchen making babies. One, I'll, I'll say it this way, uh, because you know, childbearing is obviously one good thing for them. But women, their role is in the kitchen. Their role is is being stay-at-home mothers. Okay, I, I'm not trying to be mean by saying that. It's just a fact. I mean, studies have shown that women are are happier. They're mentally happier when they're stay-at-home mothers. So saying, okay, maybe, okay, I'll, 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 I take that back. Saying there should be in the kitchen. Okay, that that was kind of rough, but. It is a fact that women should be in the kitchen, that they are better as stay-at-home mothers. So opportunities for women, yeah, their opportunities should be with a cookbook. So, and again, not trying to be mean, because women are obviously valuable in the eyes of God, but it's just, that's their biblical role, and it's, it's been scientifically proven that, I've shown that in past videos, it's been scientifically proven that women are mentally happier and psychologically happier when they are stay-at-home mothers. So yes, they should be in the kitchen, that should be their opportunities. And not, not try, again, not trying to downgrade them, it's just how they should be, biblically and scientifically too. It is unfortunate that the Archbishop is choosing to engage in political punditry, pun, yeah, can not, best at reading on a computer, and criticism of the President rather than helping to unite all of God's children. Uh, Catholics are not God's children. They are, um, well, any lost person is a child of the devil, but especially Catholics, they, are, uh, they worship the devil. I mean, the Vatican openly prays to Lucifer in, in the Mass. They think it's Mary, though, but whole other issue. Instead of acknowledging the symbolism behind President Trump's visit to historic St. John's Church, uh, which has been ransacked by violent looters, the Archbishop showed, chose to further divide the country. And it goes down there. But Trump is a Catholic, and here's some more proof on that. Newsweek, Newsweek magazine, the vast majority of white Catholics and evangelicals, most of the evangelicals are, are yoked up with Rome, by the way, support Trump over Biden according to the polls, and there's this one right here, in a, it's a motorcycle going by outside, not sure if you can hear it, in an interview with the EWTN, which is a Catholic news agency, Trump hails tremendous letter of support from the Catholic Church. So he's not only is he pro-Catholic, he's getting support letters from the Catholic Church and is praising them. Now if he was a Bible-believing Christian, he should be rebuking the Catholic Church and opposing the Catholic Church. But no, he's praising their letters and and you know getting praise from the Catholic Church. Again, if Trump was a Bible Bible believing Christian, he won't he won't be he won't ha be receiving praise letters from the Catholic Church, the number one enemy of, of Bible believing Christians for two thousand years, almost two thousand years. So, I had to get that out there. Trump just more proof that Trump is a Catholic. He's a Jesuit. Um, he is not a Christian. Even if he wasn't a Jesuit, he's still not a Christian because he supports a lot. Of, well, I mean. He supports some righteous things, but he is still, he supports, like, for example, he's trying to push for the legalization of sodomy worldwide and, you know, all this other stuff. He supports he supports sodomite marriage, you know, so even if he wasn't a Catholic, he still is a wicked person. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.